In this video, we look at how to apply the 6895-99.7 rule. Since we mention the normal distributions often, we use a shorthand notation in the form of N, capital N, to represent the normal distribution, and then in parentheses, mu comma sigma to represent the values of the mean and the standard deviation. So the capital N tells us this is a normal distribution, mu is shorthand for the mean, and sigma is shorthand for the standard deviation. These are the mean and standard deviation for the whole population. We'll see later on when we're talking about a sample, we use slightly different notations. The summer monsoon brings 80% of India's rainfall, and it is essential for the country's agriculture. Records going back more than a century show that the amount of monsoon rainfall varies from year to year, according to a distribution that is approximately normal with a mean of 852 millimeters rainfall and standard deviation 82 millimeters rainfall. So in shorthand, we write capital N and then in parentheses, we put 852 comma 82. So another statistics student looking at this right away would know, oh, N is for normal distribution. 852 is a value for my mean and my standard deviation telling me how the graph is stretched or compressed is 82. We saw earlier the uniform distribution, and the kind of flat looking distribution. So in the uniform distribution, we would use a U. Uh, we're going to see the binomial distribution. For that distribution, we use a B. We'll see the geometric distribution. For that distribution, we would use a G for shorthand. So the letters represent the name of the distribution. So part A, we're going to use these mean and standard deviation values to fill in the normal distribution curve. So the first move in filling in the normal distribution curve is to start at the mean and write down our value. So in this case, we've got 852 millimeters in the center. Instead of writing millimeters next to each number, I went ahead and labeled across the bottom the units are monsoon rains, and they're measured in millimeters. So I'll know along my x-axis what I'm measuring without having to try to squeeze in mm next to all the numbers. Then if I want to increase by one standard deviation, I calculate 852 plus 82, and that's where the 934 comes from. To increase another standard deviation on my x-axis, I add another 82. That's where the 1016 comes from. And then usually we go up to a third standard deviation. So we add an 82 to the 1016, and we get 1098. Similarly, to fill in the lower side of the normal distribution, we start at 852 and subtract 82 to get the 770, subtract another 82 to get the 688, and subtract uh, another 82 to get 606. So typically we go down three standard deviations and up three standard deviations. You could go on and on forever, but we usually stop at three standard deviations because that's where we've captured most of the data. Remember from the 6895-99.7 rule that from 606 all the way to 1098, we've captured 99.7% of the data. So I'm going to use our chart for how to break down the different percents in a normal distribution. That's what I've done here in green to break up the distribution by the percents. So above each standard deviation, I kind of just roughly draw a line up to the top of the curve. And then I went ahead and filled it in with the percents. So we know from the mean down one standard deviation is 34%. And from the mean up one standard deviation is 34%. Those two combine to be that middle 68% when we're within one standard deviation below or above. And then we know uh, if we got two standard deviations, that captures 95% of the data. So from our chart or by doing some subtraction calculations, we can figure out each side down two standard deviations adds an additional 13.5%. And by symmetry, it's the same on the upper part of the graph. And then we know between two and three standard deviations is 2.35%. Uh, and you can verify if you add that with all the other values, we should add up to 99.7%. And then the tails have that last 0.15%. We always leave a little room in the tails because we don't know if we've captured all the data or not. As soon as we think we found the wettest monsoon rain year, another uh, monsoon year with more rain could come up. So labeling our distribution with all the percents corresponding to the normal distribution will make it easier for us to solve the questions that come from analyzing this distribution. Remember the 6895 99.7 rule is just accurate uh, 
slightly rounded values. So if you go into StatCrunch, StatCrunch will be more accurate. So this is pretty accurate, but StatCrunch is most accurate. So you might get slightly different values um, to like the third or fourth decimal point, and that's just fine. You can always write me a note. You know, I did this with the 6895 99.7 rule, or I did this with StatCrunch, if you notice a difference. Question B asks, between what values do the monsoon rains fall in 95% of all years? So that's between, I said for shorthand, negative 2 sigma, because sigma stands for standard deviation, or in parentheses I wrote a minus 2 or negative 2 standard deviations, and then up to plus 2 sigma or plus 2 standard deviations. So for shorthand, instead of writing out standard deviation, you can write sigma. If you want to write SD, that's just by looking also. So looking at our labeled chart here, we see that as rain falls between 688 millimeters all the way up to 1,016 millimeters. If we wanted to calculate it by hand without having drawn out and labeled our chart already, the calculation to find the lower value or the lower limit would be to take our mean 852 and subtract two standard deviations. So you can see I've annotated here, we take 852 minus 2 times 82. Math, order of operations, it says do your multiplication first. So 2 times 82 is the 164. And then we calculate 852 minus 164 is that 688. We do a similar calculation to find the upper limit or the upper bound. And so we would take 852 plus 2 times 82. That'll be 852 plus the 164, and that's how we get the 1,016 millimeters. So I like to label and fill in the percents of my chart. You could also find the 95% middle range um, using these calculations if you didn't want to draw out the chart. Part C asks us to find how high are the monsoon rains in the top 0.15% of years. So we know that is after three standard deviations. And it's asking about the top 0.15% of the year, so I said that corresponds to plus 3 standard deviations, so that's up here at 1,098 millimeters and higher. So these are rainfalls of 1,098 millimeters and higher in the top 0.15%. Question D asks us, how small are the monsoons in the driest 2.5% of years? So we can go over to the left side of the graph because we're talking about the driest years, start with our 0.15% and then just keep adding until you get to whatever percent we're given. In this case, we're given the driest 2.5% of years. So 0.15% plus 2.35%, that's the bottom 2.5%. So that corresponds with going down to standard deviations for this value of 688 millimeters. You could also think about the fact that two standard deviations corresponds to 95% in the middle. 100% take away that 95% leaves us with 5%. So you have two tails on this graph. So we have to split that 5% up between two tails. So that's 2.5% in each tail. So when you see that 2.5% in one of the tails, you might say, oh, that must correspond with 95% in the middle because we've got 2.5% in each tail or 5% left out. All right, question E tells us in 2015, the actual monsoon rainfall was 760.6 millimeters. I went and looked up some actual data about the monsoon rains in India. So we want to know about how many standard deviations from the mean is a monsoon rainfall of 760.6 millimeters and about what percent of monsoon rains are less than 760.6 millimeters. All right, so we know the mean minus one standard deviation or one sigma for shorthand, is 852 minus 82, or 770 millimeters. All right, so this point, 760.6 millimeters, is a little bit further out than that, but pretty close. So if you look up here at the distribution, I drew in a yellow line here with my highlighter a little bit below 770 millimeters. So I tried to estimate where I think 760 millimeters would be or 760.6 millimeters. So we estimate the point 760.6 millimeters is about minus 1.2 standard deviations below the mean. And then we have to figure out, well, what percent would correspond with this? So if we add up all the percents up to 770, the values 0 0.15 plus 2.35 plus 13.5 percent add up to 16 percent. So 
we estimated about 15% of the monsoon rains will be less than the 760.6 millimeters. And I put a little note, this is a rough estimate. We can be more precise. So we can figure out exactly how many standard deviations below the mean 760.6 millimeters is. And we're going to do this by working backwards. So we're going to use a variable z to represent the number of standard deviations. So for the rest of the semester, when you see the variable z, you know that's counting the number of standard deviations. So in general, we could say 852 plus z times 82, the number of standard deviations times the standard deviation 82, is how we get to whatever value we have. So in this case, our rainfall was 760.6, so we say 852 plus z times 82 equals 760.6. We're going to use algebra and work backwards to find out what z is. So our first move to get z by itself is to subtract off the 852 from both sides. So we get z times 82 equals 760.6 minus 852. And then our next step to get z by itself is going to be to divide by 82. So we have 760.6 minus 852 all divided by 82. So in the numerator we subtract 760.6 minus 852 and that gives us negative 91.4. And then we divide that by 82. And so we get negative 1.115 standard deviations is exactly how far out that 760.6 millimeters is. We're not surprised to see a negative result because 760.6 millimeters is below the mean. And this is really close to our estimate of 1.2, negative 1.2. So we came pretty darn close. The general formula to find z, how many standard deviations away from the mean a point is, is to say x minus the mean, and I put this in parentheses because when you're doing fraction calculations like this, you have to do the numerator subtraction first before you divide, and then you take that value and divide it by the standard deviation. In symbols, we write the formula as x minus mu, where mu just is a symbol representing the mean, all divided by sigma, where sigma is a symbol representing the standard deviation. All right, the z value counting the number of standard deviations here is not 1, 2, or 3. So our 68, 98.7 rule is only going to give us an estimate. So we can use technology or a table to find the area less than the z value. So we are going to use StatCrunch, uh, my favorite technology, as you know. So in StatCrunch, we're going to go into Stat Calculator's Normal Calculator, and then we're going to type in our mean and standard deviation corresponding with this problem. So let's head over to StatCrunch in my browser. Uh, you can open a blank StatCrunch or use a window you already have open. So we are going to go to Stat, Calculators, Normal Calculator. My mean here is 852. And our standard deviation is 82. And then the value of the monsoon rains we're studying is 760. So we want to calculate the probability that our x, which is our monsoon rain, is less than or equal to 760.6. And then when we hit compute, StatCrunch draws out the normal distribution curve for us. All right, notice by default StatCrunch picked to count by 100s here, and that looks pretty nice. But if you see over here, once we put in our mean and standard deviation, this box for the 68, 95, 99.7 ticks showed up. So go ahead and click on that box, and voila, StatCrunch has filled in our mean and our standard deviations. These are exact matches for our calculations that we did. So you can see this matches the chart that we drew out. So the value over here in the right hand box is giving us the proportion of monsoon rains that are less than 760.6 millimeters. So if I round to uh, four decimal places, I'm going to call this proportion 0.1325. And you can see I reported this as 0.1325 or 13.25%. And the screenshot is here on your PDF page. All right, here's a note about the general formula. Z equals X minus the mean. And then we divide it by the standard deviation. X is whatever value we're computing. So right now, X is 760.6. In part H, we're going to go look at the 2016 numbers where the rainfall was 
1,111.9 millimeters. And so X is now 1,111.9. So part H asks us to find how many standard deviations from the mean is 1,111.9 millimeters. This is the 2016 rainfall when they had a heavier summer monsoon. So uh, we calculate on the numerator of this fraction, 1,111.9 minus 852, and we get 259.9, and then we divide that by 82, and we get 3.1695 standard deviations. So now remember, we say a typical distance is within one standard deviation. That's got 68% in the middle. And then uh, we say things are not really unusual if they're within two standard deviations. When we get outside two standard deviations, we start to say we are in unusual territory. So the fact that this is over three standard deviations makes me think 2016 was an unusual year. This is more than three standard deviations away from the mean. Uh, so this seems like a pretty exceptional year. So part I asks us to find what proportion of monsoon rains are less than the 1,111.9 millimeters. So if we head into StatCrunch, I'm going to change out my x value here from 760.6 to 1,111.9. Notice that area to the right went blank. So let me go ahead and hit Compute and we get 0.9992. And you can see my graph is totally red here because the 1,111.9, that's more than three standard deviations. It's not even down here on the x-axis. It's off the chart, so it looks totally red from here. The second question asks, well, what proportion of monsoon rains are more than 1,111.9? So we change our inequality and we get 0 0.00076348, which rounds to 0 0.0008. And you can see this looks totally empty because the upper part is like way off the graph over by 1,111, which isn't even visible to us. So we rely on these calculations. So over here, my PDF, I rounded these to four decimal places. So we've got the probability that the rainfall is less than 1,111.9 is 0.9992, and the probability that the rainfall is more than 1,111.9 is 0 0.0008. Now you know every uh, normal distribution should add up to 1 when we add all the areas, give or take rounding. So you can verify here that these values add up to 1 if you add them up. Now you're going to time travel with me. <coughs> you might wonder. Uh, how did we do these calculations before StatCrunch? So we used tables where people had measured out and estimated the area. So the next pages show the Z tables that students use before technology. Luckily for you, you can use StatCrunch, but I want to show you how to use the Z tables in case you're in a power outage or you're trying to do your homework on the bus and you don't have internet signal. And so our first value that we calculated back when we were finding the Z uh, value for the monsoon rain of 760.6 was negative 1.115 standard deviations. We have to do some rounding uh, to two decimal places to use a table, so we're going to round this to negative 1.12 standard deviations. So here in the table, the first page is the negative Z values, anything less than zero. And then the columns do the z values to one decimal place. I'm sorry, the rows do the z values to one decimal place. And the columns do the hundredths place. So our z value here is negative 1.12. So we're going to go down the rows until we get to negative 1.1. And then we're going to come over to the column where we've got 2 in the hundredths place. And as you can see in the picture, that's going to give us the area to the left of the z value, the lower proportion. So here's negative 1.1, and then I've come over to the column corresponding with 2 in the hundredths place. So this corresponds with the z value of negative 1.12, and that is 0 0.1314, about 13%. When we did this in StatCrunch, we got exactly 0 0.1325. So the z table is really, really close, slightly rounded. 
um, close enough for our work to give us a good estimate of that area. So you're welcome to use a z-table if you like, but it's not necessary. Um, it's a little bit antiquate, antiquated at this point, but you know, if you've got a power outage or something, you can go ahead and use it. To find the calculation corresponding with the rainfall of 1,111.9, that was 3.1695 standard deviations. So going to two places, that would ground to 3.17 standard deviations. And so we come down here to 3.1 in the rows, and then we're going to come over to the column here with the 0 0.07 in the hundreds place. So here's the 3.1 row, and then I lined it up with the column in the uh, hundreds place, and we see the result here is 0 0.9992, which is just what we got after we rounded our stat crunch result. So that's saying the left area is 0 0.9992. That's the probability a monsoon rain is less than 1,111.9. Well, what about the probability that the monsoon rain is greater than 1,111.9? We don't have that in the table, so we have to use some subtraction. So we know all areas under the normal curve add up to 1. So we would have to say 1 minus 0.9992. And that would give us the 0 0.0008, which is just what StatCrunch gave to us. So that's how you can uh, kind of go back in time and use the table if you like. But for our class, we will rely on StatCrunch.